everybody. It is Tuesday, July 23rd. It is 4 p.m. here in New York. 90 degrees. I love it. So the other day I had posted a video um, on a basic tutorial um, on Affinity Designer. I have taught this via the phone to literally probably a couple thousand members in the group. But because there's 12,000 of you now, it's getting harder and harder for me um, to keep up with the demand. So I said, I'm going to produce a video that, you know, will help you guys along. And this is the same exact um, teaching tutorial I do over the phone, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, okay? So anyway, without further ado, let's get going. You're going to open up Affinity Designer, and you're going to have the black blank screen in front of you. Okay, um, one more note. The reason I'm redoing this video is because the first one I posted a couple of days ago what ran about 19 minutes long when we uploaded it to YouTube and provided the link. The video only pay, played for 10 minutes and cut the rest of the video off. I don't know why, so I got to do it again. So you have Affinity Designer is open. There is your you know black blank screen in front of you. As many of you members have heard me say time and time again, especially when I'm doing the tutorial, when you go to do a project in Affinity Designer, you have to think about it as building a house. So in other words, when you build a house, you have to build a foundation. With the foundation, you can then build the house. So here's what I mean by foundation. Let's say you're doing a t-shirt design and I'm just gonna pick a number, it's six by six. So you're going to go up to Affinity Designer to File, New, and this window opens up. Now, here's all your pre-measured, you know, size templates, 8.5 by 11. You'll see 11 by 17, and you can scroll down and, you know, here, look at this one, 40 by 60, <laughs> which is insane, but, you know, it's possible to do it, okay? But for, for the training purposes, we're going to ignore this for a minute. Okay, you want to make sure you're on presets right here, and you're going to come over here to the layout. So, we're going to put in six by six. Don't worry about inches, Affinity Designer will fill that in. Your DPI is a minimum 300. Of course, you can make it more if you want, but the acceptable is 300. We are in the United States, not Europe, so we're going to convert that to inches. Do not worry about orientation. Um, Affinity will figure that out. Now, create artboard. Leave it unchecked for now. Here's why. You're going to learn how to create an artboard when you go to Affinity Designer's um, YouTube channel and see their other videos, and it will teach you how to create an artboard. We don't need it for the tutorial. Let's go into the color section. You want your color format to be RGB forward slash 8, okay? Um, your color profile, I've had this discussion many times, hundreds, I can't even count anymore. People call me up, Peter, my colors aren't coming out, blah, blah, blah. The first question I ask him is, who did you get your ink from? Oh, I got it from XYZ, all right? Did XYZ provide you with a color profile? No, they didn't, Peter. They said I didn't need one. I, I, I'm going to be very blunt, guys, and this is what you love about me. All right, that's BS, all right? In order for Sublimation Ink to work properly, you need a color profile. There's only one company in the United States that developed a Sublimation Ink, and rightfully so, because he was the creator of Sublimation Ink, and that's Cobra Ink. He has created a, a Sublimation Ink called uh, uh, a Cobra Ink 4.3, if I remember correctly, that does not require a color profile. But if you're purchasing, let's say, our ink, all right, um, we are Ink X Pro, all right, we have a color profile that I help all of you members, if you buy our ink, install it onto your computer. It takes two minutes. So no matter what, I don't care what anybody says, and I'm sure I'm going to upset a couple of people. You need a color profile if you want to, you know, be in the game for sublimation. So here my color profile is this one, and that's for my Epson 1430. Your numbers will be different if you have a 7710, whatever, it doesn't matter. So enough of that. RGB forward slash 8, 
you need your color profile installed for your sublimation ink. If you're going to buy sublimation ink from somebody, ask them for the color profile. If they don't have it, don't buy it. Plain and simple, okay? Transparent background, let's leave it unchecked. Again, you'll learn that from the YouTube videos on Affinity Designers channel. Include margins, unchecked, bleed should be all zeros, hit the word create. There's your foundation. You are exactly six inches by six inches across six inches in height. This is your foundation for your house. The house is your image. So how do we bring an image in here? Go over to the left hand side of the screen and you'll see all these icons up and down the screen. And there's more icons, you can add them. All right, so you're going to scroll down, and as you scroll, you'll see the name of each tool. We're going to go down to this one, the Place Image Tool. It looks like a picture frame with a picture in it. Left-click it once, and of course, my phone is ringing, and I'm going to let it, you know, uh, all right, I just turned it down. So this window is going to open up, and I'm going to pick a design here on my desktop. And you can choose any design you want, you know, whatever you're working with. It could be in your picture folder, whatever. Okay? And let me turn this down. They're going to have to wait. Once you click the image and hit open, you're going to see a little arrow pointing down to a swimming pool. Left click once. Okay? Now, some cases, the image might be larger than the the foundation or smaller than the foundation all right so what you want to do is go up to this little tool up here okay um and the little horseshoe tool that's your snapping tool make sure you left click it once to activate it so this image is much larger than my foundation so we're going to grab the image and move it because i want to find the corner see here's the corner grab it and start shrinking it down grab it again start shrinking it down grab it one more time and there's the image okay so here's what i want to do you want to bring it over to the top left hand corner and do you see the red and green lines that are intersecting at the corner that's your snapping tool taking effect showing you that you're exactly in the corner let it go these blue dots that you see all around are your placement dots. So you're going to grab this dot, bring it over, left click and hold it, and there's your green and red line intersecting. Let it go. Uh, there we go. At the bottom here, you want to do the same thing. Scroll down if you have to with your mouse so you can see the bottom, and just click and hold and pull it down. You see all those lines? That's showing me I'm exactly six inches by six inches, and I'll prove it to you. Come over here. And there it is. Width and height is six inches by six inches. Okay? So now you've just built your house on your foundation. Okay? So let's keep going. We're going to go back over to the left hand side. Okay? And here is more icons. You're going to find your artistic text tool. You'll see a little arrow hanging off of it. Right click move over to artistic text tool click it now look at my mouse it became a crosshair with the letter a so let's just go right here to the center of the image if you want look there's the green line showing i'm exactly in the center left click once move your mouse away and you're going to see a blinking cursor okay so let's type in your name in my case i'm going to type in my name two capital letters b-e-t-e-r all right, or your name, whatever, okay? Take your mouse, go back over to the top of the icon list and hit move tool, left click it once. It takes me out of the former command, which was the text tool. Go back over to your name and you will grab the, the bottom left-hand corner, the top, it doesn't matter. You just I just want you to stretch your name out, okay? So you could see it, all right? Now, here's my name in plain you know, Arial black font, all right? Underneath the Affinity Designer logo, as you see up here in the top left-hand corner, you're going to see your font list. Drop it down, go to the first font. Don't click on it, just go to the first font. Go to the second one. Look at my name or look at your name. 
you can change it to whatever font you want. So I'm going to pick Algerian. I'm just going to pick Algerian. All right, and there's the blue lines around it, okay? I can make my name bigger. I can make it longer, whatever, all right? So we don't want to do black. So we go over to the color wheel. The color wheel, there's the color triangle, all right? It doesn't matter. So let's pick a color, red. Pick another color, another shade of red, yellow, green, blue. Looking at my name. Now, the blue, I want to change the shade. Go into the triangle. I just change the shade. Go into the triangle. So when you find the color that you like, you keep that color, all right? We're going to go take it a step further, all right? So we just change our plain black font into a fancy colored font. Underneath the color wheel, okay, you're going to see these four tabs, layers, effects, styles, text styles. Click on styles. You're going to see all these gears. I love this in Affinity Designer. Let's count down five. One, two, three, four, five. Move over to three. It says 80s poster shine. Click it. Look at my name. I just added a, like a three-dimensional embossed glitter on my name. Pick a different gear. Pick a different one. Pick a different one. It is just awesome what this program can do. All right, so just pick a gear. So as you can see here, all right, here's my name in this special glittery font. Grab the, the, the center letter in your name, left click and hold it. You can move the name any way you want on your image. You see the dot at the top center of the, of the you know, middle letter of your name? Go to the dot above it, don't do anything, and you'll see that the mouse curves. It changed. Left click, hold it, and just rock your hand back and forth. You can now change the angle of the name, all right? So, again, a basic tutorial, but it's giving you, you know, what you need to know in the beginning to, you know, overcome that hurdle. The learning curve is very, very small in Affinity Designer. It's an awesome program, and when you really learn it, you're going to love this thing. There is no reason on God's green earth why you should spend three or $400 for Photoshop, okay? This program is currently running at $49.99 at their website, and get it, ladies. Get this program. It's a one-time fee. You own it. Free updates, blah, 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 okay? So if you want to print this image, you'll go to File, Print, And your window will show up, and then you, you know, do your settings and everything else like you need to do, all right? So we're not going to print this. We're going to hit cancel, all right? Let's say you want to sell this design. Somebody ordered it from you, or you're sending it to your sister Mary in Ohio, all right? Um, and let's say she doesn't have Affinity Designer, all right? So you don't want to send her an Affinity Designer file. So here's what you do. You go to File. You go to Export. This is really cool. Look what Affinity Designer did. You can export this as a PNG, a JPEG, a, a Photoshop file, an SVG. It doesn't matter, all right? You pick what you want, you hit the word export, and it will export it in JPEG form or whatever file form you picked, all right? So that's really cool. Click cancel. But now let's say... You want to take this image, it's six by six, and you've got, I don't know, six shirts you have to make, all right? So instead of wasting paper, uh, I'm going to show you how to gang the image, all right? Putting more than one image of this size, six by six, onto sublimation paper without wasting paper, all right? Now, keep in mind, if the largest sublimation paper you have is eight and a half by 11, then you're going to have to print six pages of eight and a half by 11. But what happens if you have 11 by 17 or 13 by 19? Watch this, all right? What's great about Affinity is we built a house with a foundation, but Affinity allows you to build 100 houses if you want. In this case, we're gonna build a second house. Go back up to File, New. Remember over here we put in the six by six? So, I want to print six of these, but I have 13 by 19 paper. 
See, 13 by 19. Those are the only two numbers that will change. Everything else remains the same. Hit the word create. Look at that. I've got a 13 by 19 inch paper foundation. All right. Here's where it gets really, really cool, guys. All right. Go back over to your place image tool right here. Place image tool. Left click it once. That window showed up. All right. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I forgot to do something. I apologize. All right. Go back to file. Click close. I'm back to my original image. In order to do the next step, you have to go to file and save as. That's going to save it as an affinity file. It says untitled.afdesign. I'm saving it to my desktop. I'm not going to bother naming it. Hit the word save. I just saved it as an affinity file. Okay. Go back up to file, new. The 13 by 19 is still there. Click create. There's my paper foundation. So this is the second step. The second foundation is the size of your paper. Okay. Go over to your place image tool. The window popped up. Now there's the image that I just saved. Click on it. Hit the word open. Bring your mouse back over. There's that Swimming pool with the arrow, left click once. There's the six by six image. Do not touch these dots or else you're going to change the size of the image. So it's perfectly six by six sitting on a 13 by 19 piece of paper. Take this image and drag it up to like, like that. Right? To, you don't have to go, just leave a little bit of white space right here at the corner. Okay. Go up to the word edit, duplicate. Now yours might say duplicate selection, that's fine. Click duplicate, nothing happened. Watch this. Oh, wow, I have two images, okay? Click the first one, edit, duplicate, drag it down, edit, duplicate, Move it up so it's on the paper, and you can position them so you have a, you know, hit, go to the second row, edit, duplicate. Look at the intersecting lines. It's a perfect, they're equally spaced apart. And there's my third one. And boom, you now have six images on one piece of paper, okay? You go up to file, print, do whatever. There's your 13 by 19. So hopefully this tutorial will help you a little bit. And um, again, if you have any questions, feel free to call me at the office. I'm here from 9 to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every day from Monday through Friday. You could reach me at 631-730-7228. You can email me, peter at acesdeals.net or... If you're in the group, Facebook message me. And if you're not in the group, make sure you join the group. Sublimation Central, answer the four basic questions. You're going to be part of the greatest family on the planet. Okay? Have a great day, guys. Enjoy. Love you all.